Greetings everyone and welcome to another episode of First Thoughts. Today we're going to be covering a film that we saw on opening weekend, Stephen King's It. So as you might figure, this is going to be a spoilers review where Jared and I are going to tell our full thoughts on the film and whether or not we enjoyed it or not. We assume that you did see it, but if you don't really care about spoilers, then hey, continue watching this video. Otherwise, save it for later. Watch it and uh, watch later tab if YouTube even still does that. I think they do. And after you see the movie, come back and hear our thoughts and hopefully we'll be on the same level or you have a completely different opinion. We want to talk about it. But right now, Jerry and I are going to say a few of our pros, probably a couple of cons, and we're going to give you our overall thoughts and score on the film. So one of the first pros that I got from me personally is I thought the cast was pretty fantastic. In terms of their delivery and how they spoke, interacted with each other, unique personalities, I thought it meshed really well. Even though I don't remember all their names, I could already imagine what kind of lines they're going to say. And like I said, I thought it was a pretty solid cast. Did you have any thoughts on the cast themselves? Yeah, for me personally, I think the casting was all great choices all around. All of the kids did work well together, they delivered their lines perfectly, and they played off each other really well. The adults, even though they didn't pop up too many times, when they did, also did their jobs. They served their purposes within the film and delivered lines perfectly as well. Even the older bullies did, from what I saw. Yeah. And in terms of um, actors that did a great job, uh, Tim Curry in the original It, he was Pennywise for that iteration years ago, but Bill Skarsgård did a great job as Pennywise in this film. His ways of speaking and mannerisms, as well as his physical acting, were all really well done and brought new mysterious, um, an air of mystery to the Pennywise character, as well as creeped you out with how he was moving and acting and everything. Dude, I totally agree with you on Pennywise. Uh, quick disclaimer, I never saw the original miniseries and I've never read the books, even though I heard there's some kind of shifty shit in that story. Mm. I went in seeing this film completely blank, apart from like post-production things and like that, and I thought Pennywise was fascinating as hell. And like I said, the other disclaimer that I have, I'm not really into horror movies, mostly because, not because I'm, I get scared, but nothing really scares me on this level. So I just went in pure curiosity and boy, was I satisfied, Jared. The things that Pennywise did, based off each character, he, he would materialize certain realities around each kid based off what they were afraid of. And it was so interesting to see the range of like, fears that he was able to elicit was really spectacular. Like for the Jewish kid Stan, he like brought this woman in a painting that he ran into alive. And while there probably wasn't like a real true stem of fear, like everyone's like afraid of something like afraid of like spiders or heights or claustrophobia, mm -hmm. personal trauma that people go through with, with their elicits their fear. Yeah. For kids, it's a lot more simple. Like when I was watching the film, Jared, I kind of mm -hmm. thought of you and Little Nightmares. Oh yeah. Because Little Nightmares was kind of based off the idea of like basic fears that children might go through. Mm -hmm. A little less realized, but we're not here to talk about Little Nightmares. Yeah. We're here to talk about Pennywise and his fears. He pretty much became real life entities of basic things that would scare a child. Mm -hmm. And he just spread across the film doing all these things. It was almost like an anthology film for me. Mm. Seeing like each kid kind of go on their own path of discovery. Each yeah. of them had their own challenges and eventually emerged into one thing for the third and final act. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, Pennywise didn't scare me personally, but a lot of the shit he did was really cool, especially during the projector scene, or at least at the very end of the projector screen. Yeah. I thought that was like very Dark Souls and I loved it. Yeah, I agree. The transformations were all really well done. For me, personally, one of my favorite transformations in the film yeah. was that um, while they were heading towards the final act of the movie and confronting Pennywise and everything, at one point Stan, the Jewish kid, uh, gets separated from the group and the painted lady form that Pennywise can take gets him. But the other kids do catch up and shoo, essentially shoo him off of Stan. So, weird jaw teeth thing on Stan, like he lets go of him, and I honestly thought Stan was dead. I thought so too, because I mean, the thing was practically enraptured on, yeah. on his face. 
Yeah, essentially like a giant leech kind of thing on his face. Yeah. But yeah, it let go of him, opened its mouth, backed off, and what they did was when the painted lady got to the corner, it went around the corner, but the, its hand was still on the corner of the like piping. Yeah. And then Pennywise leered back out as Pennywise. Yeah. And then fully transitioned away, like went away behind the wall of the sewer. Yeah. And I thought that was really well done because it's like, whoop. Ooh, and then gone. Yeah, there's definitely a classic carnivalness to that. Yeah. It's just yeah. simple, a little campy, but it makes sense for Pennywise. One of my favorite transitions actually was like mm -hmm. near the very end. And again, this is a spoiler review. I mentioned this already, mm -hmm. but keep in mind this is a spoiler review. In the very final part where Billy uh, finally sees what happens to all the dead kids floating above the carnival uh, thing. nest thing. Yeah. And he sees his brother which, by the way, he lost his arm in the very beginning, apparently. Uh, Georgie, the yeah, kid? Georgie. Not Billy. Yeah. Georgie. And they were supposed to have this intimate scene, but then eventually Billy's like, I would feel sad, but I know you're not my brother! And he shoots him with, like, the weird put-down gun thing. Yeah. And for a while, they try to make you think, oh, was that really Georgie? And I was like, in my head, I was like, no, nah, that's not that's George. Weird. That makes no sense. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he just goes through this weird growth spurt and like wiggles all around. Oh yeah. And then becomes Pennywise in full body. And it's just something about just how they did that scene. It reminded me of those weird like wacky, waving, wacky, and waving things. Arms flailing too. And just like cartoon madness. I I personally really liked that transition. I thought it was really cool. Yeah. And damn, like I said, man, a lot of Pennywise's physical activity just made me lull in my head. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to laugh out loud in the theater, mostly because I didn't want to be rude. Mm -hmm. But, my goodness, it was entertaining to watch him do everything, especially that weird, like, little tracking dance. That was fucking hilarious. I want that as my screensaver at work. Same. So that was pretty much all the pros for us. We enjoyed how Pennywise was portrayed. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed how the kids were portrayed. Oh, yeah. The tones and the settings, it's kind of a given. I really like the tones. But we're here to talk about the cons. Surprisingly, for someone who's not a horror fan, and I can't speak for Jared, we actually don't have many cons. Yeah. So, let's just do this real quick like, Jared, what were some things, or something, that didn't quite work for you? Yeah, so for me, there was really only one thing that was kind of a con for me, and just because it's like, oh yeah, no, I can see that. So what's that? Uh, the creepy house. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of the sets in this movie are really well done. They fit their purpose and their look average, or yeah. at least normal for like an 80s or 90s setting. A gritty griminess to it. Yeah. The well house is essentially like the boss area in a way, if you <laughs> the will. The layer, or the, the entrance layer. to the layer. And with how it looks, it's basically a giant building of unsubtlety smack dab in the most unsubtle place. It's literally normal house, kind of empty lots, normal house, normal house, and then dark house with dark wood with broken shit everywhere and obviously abandoned and just kind of there like it got burned out or whatever. It was practically a house from the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland. It was practically a giant sore thumb in the middle of this town. It was. It, it didn't match the aesthetics of like the other buildings. No, it didn't. And there were other buildings that were run down. It was the 80s. Yeah. Kind of like shitty grass. But they weren't as run down no, and no, fucked no, up no. as this house. No, it was like suburbia run down, but this house was like yeah. pure like Essentially, wacky. Essentially, creepy house is creepy. Yeah. And that was my one con. I agree with you there, Jared. I thought that setting kind of took me out of the overall tone of the film. Mm -hmm. My cons are actually not that bad. I feel like at this point, I'm just kind of nitpicking. Yeah. Also, as a non-horror watcher anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Which is fair. I guess technically one con is that it wasn't scary. Yeah. I understand a lot of people are afraid of clowns. Mm -hmm. I understand the principle don't really know why, because clowns are more annoying than scary, but that's mm -hmm. just my personal experience. Um, my con is that it, we were in a full theater, and yeah. I personally felt like we had a lot more laughs than we did scares. Yeah. And, which is fine. It's fine to, like, have breaks within the tension. A lot of oh, action yeah. films do that. It, it's just... It's just a nitpick. It's just mm -hmm. a nitpick. 
I laughed at parts that I thought were funny. Yeah. I reacted with the audience, and I was like, <laughs> some of the shit the kids... They're kind of making fun of cliches a little bit. Yeah. There were definitely moments where they were just like, oh, fuck this shit. Yeah. And it, it had its funny moments, but I kind of felt like we needed more of the tense atmosphere. Just a little bit more. Or so I don't know. I'm, I'm probably the least person you should go to about that. The other cons, if I had to think about it, is, again, spoiler review, there were some character development things that sort of happened, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's going to be answered in Chapter 2. Yeah, yeah. newsflash. At the very end, which, by the way, was kind of a funny reaction. Oh, yeah. When, after the scene closed and the title came up saying, like, it, everyone in the theater just went clapping, like, oh, yeah! And then chapter one faded in, and everyone was like, "Ah!" Because they, a lot of people, I think, don't really know the source material that well, and they yeah. assumed, "Oh yeah, it died at the very end." And in my mind, I was like, "I kind of know the overall yeah. arc story, yeah, and same. that's not the end." But yeah. uh, so the other con that I was gonna say yeah. is that. I thought there was a really cute story happening between the chubby kid, which I'm sorry to say I don't remember his name. Yeah, I, I'm blind. I feel bad about that, but he was probably like the most likable character, yeah. in my opinion. And it was kind of cool how he showed affection for Beverly, the girl of the group. Yeah. And when she was knocked out near the very end, oddly enough, a kiss brought her out of it from like the chubby kid. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's cute. But at the very end of the film, they do a blood pack, and then when all the kids uh, leave, mm -hmm. uh, she ends up kissing Billy, the actual main character. Yeah. Uh, who acted first upon it? Well, Billy did it first, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Billy kissed Beverly first, and she was like, whoa, okay. And then she goes back <laughs> in again, and I was like, well, but what about the chubby kid? Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, ah, oh, that's poor character development. But, in chapter two, when they come back to town as adults, oh, yeah. maybe there'll be a little bit of a personal conflict and tension oh, yeah. between us. Uh, them. Between them. Between us. Between us. <laughs> Conclusion, Jared. Yeah. I don't really have many cons. Same. Because it's hard for me to say as a non-horror fan. Yeah. I had fun watching the film. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. I liked the visual effects. And oh, the yeah. different things that Pennywise did. And I think I saw the Tim Curry Pennywise cameo in the clown room. Yep. I think. I wasn't sure if I needed to look for a portrait or a doll that looked like him. And I, I think, think it was, it was a doll. doll. It was the doll that looked like yeah. him. But... Yeah, the only other thing I could think of that was kind of a con, although it wasn't a con with the movie. It was, was that? more of a con with the audience. Was that uh, like, at the end when they do the blood pat, it makes sense because that wasn't the original Fremorite. They had a, well... I don't know if it was a blood pad, but they did make a promise that if it ever showed up again, and if it wasn't actually dead, yeah. that they would return to slay it once and for all. But in this movie, they do a blood pat when they made that promise. So, you know, one by one, Billy goes and, like, they do the quick cut with the glass to yeah. actually do the blood pact. And then when they all start to, like, hold hands together for the blood pat, that some of the audience members we were with kind of reacted with, like, whinging sounds and, like, ah, yeah, like, ah. or whatever. And, of course, I looked at you and I was like, what the fuck did you think was gonna yeah, happen? Yeah, it's like, uh, people have heard of a blood pack before, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, and then yet... So, as I was trying to say here, we're gonna give our overall score and impression of the film. Well, we just gave our impression. We're just gonna tell you what we thought of the film as a scoreboard. I can't say anything right. It's late! Out of the basic score of 10 or 5 or whatever you want to say, where does this film rank to you? For me, it ranks a 9 out of 10. Mm -hmm. 9 out of 10 for me. Again, there were some campy moments and like a couple like weird little nitpick hiccups, but no film is perfect, so yeah. whatever. I enjoyed it as a non-horror fan, and if you're not a horror fan, I still think you're going to enjoy it because there's a lot of fun treats for everyone out there, so 9 out of 10, right across the board! Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's the first time that's happened, which is very cool. It is. This was a good idea. So tune in next time, folks, when we talk about something else, other movies, more video games, I don't know. Let us know what you think of the movie It. Assuming you saw it, what is it all about to you? Leave it down in the comment section below. Also remember that we have a Facebook group and a Twitter that is at Game Bros Station. 
All one word. Or you could just look at the description, because that's also down there inherently. Yep. Tune in next time, folks, when we do something else. Oh, yeah. To be continued. <laughs>